today I'm going to be building this cool little kit that I got in the last mailbag. I know it's a little bit late, but it's still Christmas season, so I think it's valid. Um, so this is a little Santa kit that comes with very few components, so it should take not that much time to put together, probably. Uh, it's got a couple of uh, RGB LEDs, a little speaker buzzer kind of thing, battery holder, some some resistors, a transistor, a couple of switches, and an STC microcontroller with bent pins. But first, in keeping with tonight's theme, I'm going to be uh, enjoying St. Nick's Oak Spiced Porter from Fort Geary Brewing. Yup, uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice. And an oaked porter, a very nice oaked porter underneath all of it. I'm happy with that. Anyway, back to Santa here. So one thing I've noticed about this circuit board, which differs from a lot of the other kit circuit boards that I've uh, got from China, is that while it does show you where the parts go, it doesn't give you any component values or anything. As you may notice, there are five resistor positions, and the kit came with five resistors. Four of one kind and one of another. Fortunately, I remember that the eBay listing, somewhere down here, had some instructions. Right, here we go. Uh, first side of the LED, long pin corresponds to the square pad. Okay, yeah, I see square pads and there's dots marking them. Okay, that's good. After the two LEDs are soldered, solder in the 470 ohm resistor. And then the 47K resistor. Then the buzzer and... Which one goes where? Okay, here's another picture from somewhere else. So there's the four same resistors and there's the one different one. Okay, transistor goes there. IC goes there with the notch facing down that's good positive of the buzzer speaker thing goes up okay that seems straightforward enough but it said that there were 470 ohm resistors and as much as i don't do color code because i'm colorblind i'm pretty sure the seven is yellow and i'm not seeing any yellow on there i think i see a yellow stripe on there Okay, that's 4.7K, and that is 100 ohms. Hmm, okay. So I wonder what these guys are doing in the circuit. I'm going to guess that the resistors, uh, three of the four anyway, are probably for the LED, RG, and B. Uh, the fourth one is over there kind of by the buzzer. Is that resistor talking to the buzzer? Yeah, it is. Okay. So that makes sense. And these ones... Okay, that one goes to the LEDs. That one goes to the LEDs. And that one goes to the LEDs. Okay. So you got 6 volts over 100 ohms equals 60 milliamps. Will those LEDs take 60 milliamps? That might be a little bit much. I think I might substitute those resistors. So I don't think I want to pop them. So six volts over 20 milliamps is a 300 ohm resistor. So let's do 330. Just to be safe. Should I figure it out? Should I uh, go through and reverse engineer this thing and before I build it? Yeah, maybe I will. So there is the battery negative. So there's the battery positive. It goes straight to one side of that. Okay. Battery positive goes straight to one pin of the chip. So that's going to be VCC of the chip. How come it's not going to one of the switches? Are they switching the negative side? They are. They're switching the negative side. 
Okay. So then the center pin of that switch, I assume, is going to come down to the negative of the chip, which is on pin 4. Okay, I'm just going to keep banging through this and figure out where everything goes, and I'll come up with a rough schematic, and I'll be right back. Okay, that, uh, that wasn't too bad to figure out. I did actually first, as soon as I turned the camera off, went and did some Googling and searching and stuff, and I couldn't find a schematic for this thing. I was hoping to do it that way and do it the lazy way, but I couldn't. So, what happens here? We have the two LEDs. I got lazy and didn't draw them both. Basically, they're red, green, and blue. Um, what do you got? Anodes are in common. It's a they're are tied together. Um, so these are common cathode LEDs. Let's figure that out using the LED tester here. Um, and figured out which pin is which, so that I could figure out which pin goes where on there, or sorry, down there. Not that it matters because they go in order as long as you put the common uh, pin on the dot. It's that's fine. Um, they are in fact switching the negative side um, to pin four of the chip. Uh, pin two is power, like we figured. Uh, pin three goes through that, uh, so that that drives the buzzer through the transistor uh, from pin three, which I assume is. Uh, uh, sending, yeah, sending a pulsating signal to make some noise. Um, and you can switch that off if it annoys you. Uh, and then what I got here, pins five, six, and seven go to the red, green, and blue and pin, uh, through resistors and pin eight and pin one go to the cathode of the two LEDs. So it can take either pin one or pin eight or both of them low. Um, to take the cathode low, and then it can take uh, either pins 5, 6, or 7 high to create the red, green, or blue. So it can have any color on either LED um, if it chooses to, and just by doing it fast enough, it can make it look like uh, they're both on at the same time. So that's, uh, that's all that's going on there. If anyone else is searching for a schematic for this thing in the future, hopefully they find this and I've saved them a few minutes. Anyway, now that we know all this, let's get back to what we're supposed to be doing, building. I'm just going to set that off to the side where I can watch it while I'm doing this. I guess before we get too carried away here, we should straighten out the pins on this little microcontroller just so that we can actually use it. It shouldn't be that hard. They're all a little askew in two different directions, but just going slowly and gently. I should bring them back to life here. Just... That's pretty close. Hopefully it didn't get too badly abused in the mail. Um, I'm hoping it still works. Oh yeah, normally I use a sponge, but people seem to like these things. So I'm going to give that a shot today. Right, so LEDs first is what it said in the pseudo instructions. And the picture shows the LEDs poked through the back and so soldered on the front side, the public facing side. That's a little strange, but I'm going to go with how they did it, how they show it in the demonstration. Oh man. Oh, come on. How hard can this be? I think there's... There we go. Wow, that was uh, not as easy as I thought. I'm going to go right up to the little pinches on there. And should I toss them both in at once? Maybe. Yeah, I'll just do one first. So I would kind of like to have this in a board holder, but it's not going to be easy with this weird board shape. So I think I'm just going to try and do it this way. Cool. 
clearly I'm going to have to clean this, uh, the flux off this board when I'm done here. That tip might be a little bit too big too. I think I'm going to pause and change tips to this little guy here. Hopefully I can throw enough heat into the larger components. I don't see why it shouldn't be able to. Although I might have to change back to a larger tip to do that. We'll see. And there the tip has been changed. So hopefully this is a little bit easier. Oh yeah, that works better. But I'm still going to have to clean that up a little bit. I did get some decent solder fillets pulling through to the side, so that's good. Trim this side off and carry on. Like I said, I'm going to have to clean the uh, flux off this side, but since the presentation side is also the solder side, I'm going to have to do that all over the board. So, LED number two. Is it going to be just as much of a bear to get in there? Oh, come on. Okay, that's not so bad. Let's push him down to the same distance and do the same thing. There we go. That looks much nicer using a proper sized uh, tip. I was thinking for through holes that I would have to use the bigger, slightly bigger tip, but this is working okay. Next, I will do the series resistors. I think that's what it said. So there's the four of those that I chose. 330, not the 100s that were in, the, that actually came with the kit, and not the 470s that it suggested. These four as men or these three, these first three are the series resistors for the LED as mentioned. And the fourth one is the series resistor for the buzzer. I'll be surprised if I keep this actually in shot the whole time. I probably should have zoomed out, but uh, oh well. These through hole component or these uh, plated through holes, um, I'm sort of leaning towards something that Julian Eilet started doing or experimenting with, and that's not being too stressed that I don't get a full standard solder fillet on the solder side because it's sucking through onto the other side through the hole. So there's an entire cylinder full of solder in there. That looks pretty good on that side. And I am trimming these fairly close. Again, it's uh, not going to weaken the solder joint because there's more solder joint in the plated through hole than there is on the surface. And that keeps it from being too pokey and dangerous to any passers-by this being an ornament and all right okay so now i will do the 4.7k resistor which is in the base of the transistor okay oh yeah uh, these leds are supposed to be facing down that way so that they're visible from the front i think the switch is next and I'm going to need some blue tack to keep those from falling out. Or blue tacky stuff. Uh, Fun tack, I think, is the brand name of the one that I'm using from the dollar store. But it's all the same. It's just some removable putty. It's actually um, sold for you know, poster hanging and stuff like that. But it works just fine for this. We're just temporarily holding stubborn components in place. So this switch down here is the one that uh, turns the speaker on and off. And this one up here is the power switch. 
weirdly switching on the low side. And it doesn't matter. And electrically, it's the same thing. You're taking one side off the power supply. But normally, you'd expect something to switch on the high side. Now, I'm just going to get my older pair of cutters to cut off these switch pins here. Because having bought replacements, I don't want to damage the new ones. Now then, the buzzer. The positive, if we remember from the photo on the website, goes closer to the resistor. And from looking at the schematic, that puts the positive side going this way and the negative side going off to the switched ground. It really is a simple little kit. And it would be even easier if they had bothered to tell you the which component values go where, so I didn't have to reverse engineer it. But so it goes. Right, two components left. Transistor next. That just goes in there according to the uh, silk screen. I think I'm going to have it stand just a little bit proud, just so that when I'm soldering it, I don't uh, I have a little bit of distance from the body of it. It's not that fragile. It's just a cheap little silicone PNP transistor, but I don't want to have to desolder it. Did I make a mess of that? No, nope, those are all okay. I was a little concerned that I might have uh, gotten a little bit too blobby. It's not perfect, but they're also not shorting each other. So I think I'm going to put the battery holder on next. This is the one that's going to be a little bit of a challenge just due to how much heat is going to be lost in this thing. I may have to change my soldering tips again. I think I'm actually going to try it from this side. I'm going to lay my iron alongside of it. It's actually taking. Wow, that worked. Okay. I didn't think that would work with this little tip. That actually worked. I impress even myself sometimes. Right. The last and most potentially fragile component, the horribly abused chip. And that should just drop right in there. Normally, I would want to put a socket on it. Um, don't think so in this case, just because I'm not, not going to take that out. Uh, I'm just going to be brave. And hope that I don't cause any damage soldering it. If I do, I'll just blame it on the mail anyway, because they delivered it squashed. But I'm going to take some precautions, like my usual spreading the heat around method. Not soldering two pins that are adjacent to each other in a row. That didn't work. There we go. There we go. Okay, that is everything soldered. Okay, so now I'm just going to take some alcohol. Everybody says they use isopropyl. I'm using 99.9% .9 methyl because it's easier to get from the hardware store. Um, alcohol is alcohol. Um, well, not quite. This is a different alcohol, but, you know. 
This is just a bristle brush. Just try and get in there because the cut and swab Q-tip thing can't get in there. Okay, now for the moment of truth. Let's get a good zoom in on Santa Claus here. Uh, put the two CR 2032 cells in. And we'll switch on the on the power. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so this switch down here shuts off the speaker. And apparently, if you, yeah, just pop the, the power quickly. Or is it, each time you turn it on and off, it comes up with a different song. Oh, wow, it's slowly fading the LEDs in. Can you see the PWM flicker? Yes, you can. I can't in real life. So each song has its own light show. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that was fun. Um, I always enjoy a nice little kit. And this one, once uh, once I did a little bit of figuring out, was pretty straightforward and fun. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching all year. Actually, um, I'm I'm constantly amazed at how many people actually uh, show up to see what I'm up to. Um, yeah, uh, I'm so happy holidays, all of them, any of them. Um, I will. Talk to you again.